What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be having a look at the full list of basic training skills in Call of Duty World War II. In addition to this, towards the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing my top 7 basic training skills to use in this game. Keep in mind, with the first part of this video, this is more so designed for the people that don't have the game yet, don't have access to it, maybe they're on the fence about buying it and want to see all of the content that's in the game. If you already have the game, you've already gone through the list, you already know what they all look like, I'll leave a timestamp right here so you can just skip ahead to the ending part where I talk about the top 7. Also, I just wanted to point out this isn't going to be a detailed breakdown of each one of these individual basic training skills. Those will be coming out over time. Many of these skills are going to require a lot of testing and a dedicated video covering them. So if you're interested in seeing those in the future, make sure you subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into the list. In the beta build of the game, we only had access to 14 basic training skills. In the full build, we have access to 21. First up we have espionage, and with espionage, enemy score streaks and enemies that you damage will appear on the minimap. So as an example, if an enemy calls in a recon plane, that recon plane will appear on your minimap which will help you shoot that recon plane down a little bit easier. In addition to that, if you put a couple shots into an enemy and he gets behind cover or he runs away and you can't see him anymore, he will show up as a dot on the minimap for a limited period of time. Moving on to the next one, this is Launched. Launched allows you to take a launcher as a secondary instead of a pistol, and you will resupply it from enemies that you kill without explosives. Currently, as far as I'm aware, this is the only way to get a launcher on your class in this game. Next we have Requisitions, and with this one, score streaks don't reset on death, but they will cost more to earn and can only be earned once in a game. For those that are wondering, the score increase from this one is pretty massive, so it's not like some noob can just pop this on and then be earning a ball turret gunner every game. That's not going to be happening. But at least they will essentially be guaranteed to earn something like a recon plane or even some of the lower to mid-range streaks. Moving on to instincts, this is just like perception from Infinite Warfare, and with this one you get a warning when you're being targeted off screen. In addition to that, you're able to detect enemy explosive equipment. Just a brief explanation of this one, what this means is if an enemy is looking at you and they aren't on your screen at the moment, so they're looking at you from behind or from the side, your screen will flash a little bit, and if I'm not mistaken from the beta, it also makes a very small sound. This is just to let you know that, hey, somebody's looking at you, it doesn't pinpoint exactly where they are or anything, but it does let you know that you're being targeted. Moving on to Rifleman, this one's pretty straightforward. It allows you to take two primary weapons instead of having a primary and a secondary, and it allows you to swap weapons faster. Next up we have Hustle, and Hustle just allows you to reload faster and reload while sprinting. Moving on to Lookout, with this one, enemy targets will appear from further away, and what this means is that red name tag that appears above enemies when you're targeting them, that will appear at a much greater distance. And in addition to this with this basic training skill, we get increased minimap coverage. And this doesn't seem to have changed at all from the beta build of the game, and I did a breakdown of this in the beta build. It turns out this actually doubles the size of your minimap coverage. Getting into Gunslinger, this one allows you to fire your guns while you're sprinting as well as diving. For Ordnance, this one gives you cheaper score streaks and the ability to re-roll your own care packages. Moving on to Primed, this one gives you an additional primary attachment and less flinch when you're being shot. Most of you can probably already tell this is going to be discussed later on in the video. Next up we have Undercover, and with Undercover, killed enemy death locations will be hidden and reticles do not change when you're targeted. So for this one, just in case you're confused, when you kill enemy players, normally for their teammates there will be a skull where they died. When you're using this basic training skill, that skull will not appear for them. So it's great for those people that are flanking and trying to be stealthy and everything like that. And in addition to that, when an enemy aims at you, your red name tag appears above your head. When you're using this basic training skill, that won't happen. Moving on to the next one, this one is quite interesting. This is called Serrated. With this one, you get a melee weapon as a primary weapon, and this allows you to melee faster. In addition to this, you get two throwing knives and two tacticals on your class. Moving on to Duelist, this one allows you to dual wield your pistols as a secondary, and it also gives you extra pistol ammunition. As for Forage, this one is just like Scavenger in the past, you resupply bullets from killed enemies, and you swap weapons faster. Just keep in mind, this does not replenish your equipment. Next up we have Bang, and Bang allows you to take two frag grenades as a lethal, as well as an extra piece of tactical equipment. Moving on to Flanker, this is something that a lot of people are happy to see as a basic training skill. This one keeps you hidden from enemy recon aircraft while moving quickly. So this is like Ghost in the past, but it's more the Treyarch route of Ghosts where it's not working all the time, it's only working when you're moving around the map. In addition to this, you get delayed detonation of enemy mines. 
Getting into the next one, this one is called Scoped, and with Scoped, while aiming down sight, you have less idle sway and you're able to move faster. Keep in mind, if you are using the infantry division, this will not stack with the division training skill that allows you to move faster while aiming down sight. Getting into Energetic, this one allows you to sprint again sooner and not take damage from falling. Now, a lot of people misunderstand what the sprint again sooner means. This isn't sprint out time or anything. What this is, it's your sprint recovery time. So when you're sprinting, you eventually run out of breath and you have to catch your breath. This allows you to catch your breath a little bit faster so you can get back to sprinting sooner. Next up, we have Hunker. And with Hunker, you get early grenade warning, you take less damage from explosives, and you're able to reset the fuse of a frag grenade that is thrown at you. So if an enemy throws a frag at you, you can throw it back. And when you do throw it back, it resets that fuse. That way, if it was already cooked and it was just about to go off, it will reset the fuse and it won't blow up in your hand. Next up is something that a lot of people are going to be very happy to see, myself included. This is inconspicuous. With this one, you get quieter movement and you're able to walk faster while crouched. The big thing with this one is the quieter movement. A lot of people were very worried that the only way we'd be able to get Dead Silence is through the Mountain Division. Turns out that is not the case, so Search and Destroy isn't completely broken now, and that is excellent to see. But it's pretty much just Dead Silence that we've seen in the past, and you're able to move faster while crouching. So finally, moving on to number 21 on the list, this is Concussed. And with Concussed, you're able to take two Concussion Grenades, as well as an extra piece of lethal equipment. So that's the full list of basic training skills. As it is right now, it appears that we will only ever be able to pick one of these basic training skills per class that we make, which is a little bit unfortunate because it's hard to choose one out of 21. Having said this, I see where they're going with it. They're trying to make it so we don't have a bunch of super soldiers with all kinds of perks. It is going to be balanced in the sense that everybody only gets to choose one, but it does kind of suck that you can't make certain combinations of perks in this game. One thing I'd like to add to that as well is there's a bunch of these basic training skills that I just can't really see being used, or at least they're very, very niche, and they would only ever really be used on rare occasions. It's likely that there's going to be a core set of probably like 5 to 10 basic training skills that are used most of the time, and then a bunch of the other ones are just going to get left behind. But now that we've covered the full list, let's have a look at what I feel are going to be the top 7 basic training skills in COD World War II. These are the ones that I've been playing around with a little bit, and these are the ones that I feel are going to be the most versatile and the most viable to choose. So first up, keeping in mind these are in no particular order for this, Primed. Primed is going to be probably one of the most powerful basic training skills in the game. This is the one that gives you an additional attachment on your primary weapon, as well as, most importantly, less flinch when you're shot. In the past, this has been an extremely powerful perk and essentially a crutch perk because it's one of the few perks that directly impacts the outcome of a gunfight. If your enemy is flinching off target and you aren't, you're going to be winning that gunfight every single time. Having said this, I will say, during my playtime so far, the base flinch isn't too bad in COD World War II. It's definitely there, it's definitely noticeable, but I don't feel this basic training skill is going to be an absolute crutch. Next up in my list of the best basic training skills, this is Hustle. Hustle's the one that allows you to reload faster and reload while sprinting, and that's always just a given. Reloading faster allows you to be on the move, get into your next engagement as fast as possible, and it's something that a lot of people are going to be using quite often. Moving on to the next on my list, this is Forage. Now Forage is just like Scavenger if you don't remember from the list. This is something that a lot of very good players that are confident with going on longer streaks will be using in this game. Many people don't like having to pick up weapons off the ground and then having to take a gamble as to what guns you're able to find and what attachments your enemies put on that gun. They just want to use the gun that's on their class, they want to stick with it, and they want to go on longer streaks. For these people, Forge is going to be pretty much necessary. Next on my list, I have Lookout. Lookout's the one that increases your minimap radius as well as allows you to spot enemy name tags from farther distances. And I think a lot of people are going to be taking advantage of this one because the base minimap coverage is just tiny in this game, and it's quite a big advantage to double that minimap coverage. This is actually one of the basic training skills that I'm going to recommend for people that are just getting into the game for the first time. It's going to help you with your awareness around the map if you're somebody that is good at checking your minimap, and it's going to also help you learn the layouts of maps a little bit more effectively. Moving on to the next one on my list, this is Flanker, and Flanker is basically the ghost of this game that allows you to stay hidden from enemy recon aircraft as long as you're moving, and I think this is going to be a very popular choice for a lot of Team Deathmatch players. It allows you to flank without popping up on the minimap, that was one of the complaints of a lot of people in the beta builds of the game, is the only way you could do that is by using the Mountain Division, and you had to sacrifice too much to gain that, 
Now you can simply pick it as your basic training skill, and you can continue with that at least somewhat stealthy playstyle. On the same note, it takes us to the next one on my list. This is Inconspicuous, which is basically the dead silence of this game, allows you to have silent footsteps. This is something that is definitely not going to be used in a lot of the modes, but for anybody that plays Search and Destroy out there, this is going to be practically a must-have basic training skill. So finally, for number 7 on my list, we have Scoped. Scoped is the one that allows you to move faster while aiming down sight, and it gives you less idle sway when aiming down sight. This is another one of those perks that's going to help you a lot in gunfights, and I can see this especially stacked with the Airborne Division is going to be a very powerful combination. They're going to be extremely mobile, and I think you're going to see a lot of those very skilled rushers using this skill. So there we have it. Those are all the basic training skills in Call of Duty World War II, as well as what I feel are going to be the top 7 basic training skills. I'd like to know in the comment section below, what are the top 3 basic training skills from this list that you see yourself using? Also, are there any that you disagree with on my top 7 list? Do you think they shouldn't be there, or do you think there's a basic training skill that should be there in its place? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.